Hi everyone, my name is Kalina. Welcome to Eye of the East Coast. Today we have Simon Brown, author of The Fun Shui Bible. Welcome, Simon. Hello. How are you today? Good, thanks. Good, good. So today we're going to talk about Fun Shui. And for our listeners, can you tell them how you got into Fun Shui? Yes, I, I studied Chinese medicine and macrobiotics and, and various forms of healing. And through that, met many Japanese teachers. And they talked a lot about Feng Shui without particularly teaching it. And then um, I uh, came back from America to London and ran a big centre. And after a while, we, uh, we found someone who was teaching Feng Shui. And we started running courses in Feng Shui. And what is Feng Shui for our listeners? It literally means wind water, and it's um, if you want the sort of more philosophical explanation, uh, if, if you think that most of what we are is water, but those water particles could have come from anywhere on the planet, any ocean or river, evaporated into the clouds, blown over to where you are, and rained and found found its way into to the any kind of water you drink. Uh, but the interesting thing is that along the way, that same water will have been through trees and plants and animals and insects and fish and, and other humans. And if the work of uh, Professor Emoto, the Japanese scientist who um, has written about the memories of water, if his work is, is valid, then it would suggest that the water that passed through us is carrying imprints from all those different places and experiences. Um, and, and then every time we take a breath, of course, we're breathing in air particles, which some of which find their way into our blood. But they could also be carrying the imprints of, of the plants and um, all the other living creatures that they've been through. So we, we're constantly being refreshed by the energy of the wind and the water. And the big claim is that they carry imprints with them, linking us to everything else. Um, how can Fun Shui help the listeners connect more with that? Like, as I know a lot of our listeners are very intuitive. So from yeah. an, intu uh, an intuitive perspective, how can Fun Shui help them with their intuition? Well, obviously meditation and anything that quietens us down from all the everyday distractions really helps, but, but being more Feng Shui specific, it, it would be having lots of living things in our homes, lots of plants and um, natural materials. Um, water features are very important in Feng Shui, so having, it could just be as simple as a glass bowl of water, which we change every day, so it's always fresh, or something uh, more of a... Um, um, complicated or sophisticated moving water feature or, or even an aquarium. For the bowl of water, where should the listeners put it in the house? Uh, well, in the Feng Shui practice, it would be somewhere that catches the, the morning sun. So as the sun's rising in the sky and bringing life onto our planet for another day, um, if it can shine through the water, then, then we have two of the main components for life, which, which would be um, the photons from the sun and, and, the, and the vitality of the water. Um, so there's a nice way you could write affirmations or intentions or even just a to-do list and put the paper under the glass bowl of water at night so in the morning... Um, the words become energised by the sun and the water energetically. And uh, the day after, what should the listeners do with the water? Uh, then you just took the water away and, and put some new water from the tap in. Um, like, with the water, should the water go outside or should it go down the drain? Oh, down the drain's fine, yeah. Okay. okay. And just for our listeners, uh, what are some basic principles of Feng Shui, if they're interested in getting started? Well, uh, if, you thought of, um, if we thought of ourselves as plants, then what we're trying to do is plant ourselves in some new soil uh, at the best time, but, but particularly in the kind of soil that's going to help a plant um, thrive and, and grow and, and flourish. 
So what we're doing is trying to plant ourselves in a home um, that will really support us in life and from which we can succeed in whatever we're trying to do. Uh, and how do we do that? Well, we need to have a home that's um, uh, got good natural light, ideally some sunshine coming in, um, and then that is... Um, it depends what you need, but some rooms would probably need to be very relaxing and, and for good sleep or meditation or, or just um, unwinding. But there might be another place that needs to be quite uh, stimulating and, um, and excellent for feeling more creative and imaginative and stimulated. Somewhere else might be a good place to um, actually just do things and get things done. And, and do all the mundane work that we need to do that often becomes the preparation for something bigger. Um, so um, would it be okay if I list what rooms and then just give tips to the listeners what they can do per room? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. What about the living room? Uh, uh, tell me what you'd be doing there as well because that makes all the difference. Okay, for our listeners, I'll just tell you what's in our living room. Uh, we just have like a TV and it's basically where we go to relax. Okay, so a relaxing living room as opposed to a sort of social party one. Uh, then uh, it's definitely worth having plants. Using colours that you find very calming. Uh, you could use lights that are lower down, um, so it's nice to have table lamps. Or the, do you know those salt lamps? They can go on the floor. Right. Um, you could use candles in that kind of room. Uh, it's good to have some softness, so that could come from curtains, cushions, soft furnishing, or rugs. Um, and then images that you partic find particularly relaxing. Well, I think those would be the most easiest things to do. Uh, and fresh flowers always helps. Uh, what about colours? Well, uh, the mo it's very personal colours, so I always work with the other person. Um, but whatever colour they like, having more um, pastel shades would help. What would you say were your most relaxing colours? Um, I would say light blue. Okay, well then, then yeah, definitely light blue would work very well. Okay, and is it true that red is an important color in feng shui? It, uh, it's associated. It's a very what we call yang color, so and fiery color, so it's associated with the sun and energy and brightness. Um, I think as humans are very attracted to it in, in foods, uh, if we're foraging, we're probably attracted to red foods. But if you go into a supermarket, it's kind of hard not to notice the strawberries and raspberries and peppers and things. Um, so in a, in a home, it's a very lively colour. So we would use it a lot to help um, add more energy to certain places. Okay. And um, what about the dining room? Uh, and how do you want to feel there? That Well, that would be more social. Okay, so then we could have the red there, reds, oranges and yellows and brighter colours. Um, we could have more uh, stimulating images. doesn't really need so much softness. Uh, it depends, but um, if, it's, if you want it to be more vibrant and, and if you like an atmosphere that's more free-flowing, then, then it could be harder surfaces. And um, we could have a, a brighter lighting or more directional lighting with spotlights and things. Um, and what about the kitchen? Well, that's usually very functional, so it needs to be easy to clean and, um, and, and ergonomic and able to work there easily. But uh, in Feng Shui, we would think that the food that's produced in the kitchen is going to create our own health. So the, everything would be geared towards making the most healthy meals. Uh, that might be having herbs growing in the kitchen in pots, or it might be um, having lots of fresh fruit and vegetables around. Um, the plants would come in strongly. And images that kind of help to stay on track with a more natural, healthy way of eating. 
And what about the bedroom? Because my understanding is for feng shui, if you're, uh, for our listeners, if you are in a romantic relationship or trying to attract a rela- uh, romantic relationship, what about the bedroom? Um, okay, so again, it's very different from one person to another, but are you in a relationship at the moment? Uh, I'm dating. Okay. So, um, so let's say then that, if you wanted the bedroom to be somewhere that was romantic, um, then you could use colours that were romantic for you. What would they be? Um, I like white. White. Uh, okay, so you could have white and then use romantic images or sculptures, different things that would make it feel nice. You can do a sort of symbolic things like having two plants sharing the same pot or two flowers in the same vase, Um, or you could group things together like two candles next to each other so that it has that feeling in there of being in a couple or being in a pair with your boyfriend. And for our listeners, if they are looking for a partner, what what would you suggest? Like, would it be the same thing? Same things, but um, in Feng Shui, we is something called the five elements a lot, which is basically just the four seasons plus the fifth one's the late summer. And um, they would all relate to different aspects of a relationship. And if someone was having difficulty starting a relationship, we would use the spring energy to kind of try and get the whole ball rolling. Uh, it could be signing onto a dating site or, or joining a club or going to places where to meet people. Mm-hmm. Then, and that's in, in the five elements called wood. Um, then we'd use the, this fiery summer energy to um, actually meet people and be attractive and noticeable. So uh, that means actually getting out and about and, and um, chatting to people and flirting and all those things that would be associated with fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we use earth energy for kind of starting a relationship, which would be, or dating, which um, would then be this more, a bit more settling down energy. And then finally, metal energy would be used for sort of making a commitment and and definitely being in a relationship with someone or or moving in together or getting married, all those things. So if someone's uh, single but wants to start a relationship, it's, it's important to think where they are in that process. If they're right at the beginning, then it's more sort of this springtime proactive energy um, if if they are going out but not not really sort of it's not working then maybe more of the fire energy and then they are meeting people that uh, even though they're sort of um, hanging out together but it doesn't really turn into relationships it's the earth energy earth energy can uh, for our listeners because uh, the uh, the five elements that you speak of is a little bit different than what we're used to because here it's more like uh, fire, earth, air, uh, water. Can you yeah. explain to the listeners like because in feng shui it's wood, water, metal, soil, and fire. Can you explain to me the differences between them? Yeah. So this system is solely based on cycles. So what the Chinese noticed is that. Um, in, in, a tip, in a day cycle, a lunar cycle, and an uh, annual cycle with the seasons, they have very similar qualities. So the, the middle of the day, the full moon and the summer would be similar, as opposed to the winter and the new moon and the night time. So the, the first set, the brighter, hotter uh, ones are all called yang, and the, the darker, cooler parts of the cycle are all called yin. So we have yin and yang. Uh, And then that's extended out to include um, the mornings and springtime and the waxing moon, which is word. And then metal would be the autumn afternoon and waning moon. And uh, there are different times in Japanese history. So this spans about 10,000 years. Um, they they changed things around, but at one point they wanted they didn't like things to be symmetrical. So rather than having four seasons, they changed it to five, which they felt reflected nature better. Um, so they added in earth or soil for the 
afternoon and late summer. That's interesting. So, yeah, yeah, and and it's interesting because basically if you think of our own bodies, it's all made up of cycles. It it doesn't matter, you know, heartbeat, breathing, menstrual cycles, all the various hormones, but but lots of other interesting cycles that are going on inside our body. So we are a mass of frequencies and everything we know of in our universe is also in a cycle. And often our, our own... Um, cycles and those of the universe mix together and harmonize. So I think that with the five elements, the Chinese were onto something very interesting, it, looking at the ways that we physically, mentally, and emotionally work with cycles that then harmonize with, with the universe we inhabit. Yeah. Um, and I wanted also to talk for the listeners about electricity and cheap looters, like because that's a really interesting chapter in your book. Yeah, so um, uh, everything that runs off uh, um, an outlet in the house, uh, in, for you it's like 115 volts, isn't it? I think so, something like that. Yeah, and if it's alternating, which it will be, it creates uh, an alternating, alternating electromagnetic field, which is abbreviated to EMF, and um, these, uh, when we're inside an alternating electromagnetic field, uh, it can be a bit confusing for us. It, it, it may affect the iron particles in our blood, but in the long term could uh, make us feel a little fuzzy in our thinking, tired, and then even contribute to poor health. Um, the, the main thing with that is it's not as bad as it often seems um, because if you're a, a yard or two away from whatever it is, the electrical device, you're usually outside the field. So if it's a router or a, a electric cooker or all those kinds of things, it's um, uh, as long as you're away from the source, it's okay. And modern things are much better, like computers now are far better than the old ones. And for our listeners, because my understanding was that in a bedroom, you shouldn't have anything electric in there. No, so it's very common when I go to people's houses, they charge their phone up next to their pillow. They uh, might have a a radio alarm clock that's plugged into an outlet. Um, They might have a a baby monitor and all kinds of things very close to them. And uh, I take a meter to measure the electromagnetic fields on the consultations. And the readings can be really high right by their head, which would mean that their mind gets confused and thinks it's daylight all night long. And the pineal gland um, apparently won't produce melatonin in that situation, which is very important for our overnight healing. And what about uh, having a TV in the room, because I heard that could be very poor feng shui too, even though it's far away from you, or further away from you. Uh, modern ones are pretty good. The flat screens are, are fine. Uh, I can only measure uh, when they're, even when they're on a, a field of about three inches from them. Um, the old ones, are, were the tube kind, were, which hardly ever exists now, but they were really bad. Mm. And I also want to talk a bit about the importance of mirrors in feng shui, if, if you could explain that to the listeners. So we can use mirrors in different ways, obviously, to see ourselves. But um, we, we can, if we've got a room that's a little dark, we can sometimes cleverly position a mirror so it reflects natural light and sunlight back into the room, and that brightens it up a lot. We can use mirrors to make a room feel bigger, uh, which is really useful if you have a, a narrow room and you want to help it feel wider. Um, and uh, we can use it sometimes to magnify things like you could have a big mirror and plants in front, but to, to the eye it'll seem like there's twice, twice as many plants. Okay. okay. And the other question I wanted to ask was the importance of, because I really like the, the practice of having like a personal feng shui temple or sacred space in the house. Can you explain that to listeners, what that is and what it does? Yes, you could, you could do your own personal one, which would have things 
in it that would you'd make a space and put things there that are really important to you. And it, again, it could include writing out affirmations or intentions or um, if you're trying to improve your self-esteem and confidence, all the things that you like most about yourself. Uh, it could be a place where you make a, a photo a montage of, of all the things you're most happy about in life or proud of or, or the things that mean the most to you or, or it could be places you want to go to. Um, it would be a flexible space, so it would keep changing and ideally it should change as you change through life. Um, and then I would keep um, other energy-giving things, so it could be water or plants or candles, also around that space, so it becomes more highly charged in terms of its atmosphere. And where in the house should that temple go? Um, sometimes it's best to do those things just intuitively, do some meditation, focus on, on the kind of energy or the atmosphere you want the temple to have, and then just walk around the house very calmly to, to really resonate with the space. Otherwise, you could say that, generally speaking, it would be somewhere on the northern side of your house so that the temple was kind of facing the south. So it'd be a bit like sitting with the back to the mountain, looking forwards, and that happened to be south, towards the sun. Okay. Um, and for our listeners, because I know um, here in Nova Scotia, a lot of our listeners use crystals. Uh, is crystals used in feng shui? And if so, how? Yeah, um, uh, they can help um, alter the energy of a space. And um, again, like we're saying with the five elements, they create a frequency of their own. Um, so they're very useful, particularly where you feel that the energy is a bit low or stuck or stagnant uh, to, to keep the crystal there for a while. Um, after a month, you might then want to put it somewhere back in the sun in places where it could charge up again. Um, or some people wash them with salt water first and then put them out in the sun. And then after a month in, in being energised, you could put them back into the darker space. What about charging it in the moon? Sorry? What about charging it in the moon? Yeah, that'd be great too, yes, be really nice. Okay, cool. I know we're going really fast. Uh, the other question I wanted to ask you was, because we touched about it at the beginning of the interview, but breathing. Um, can you give uh, any exercises or techniques to the listeners to help them increase their, their energy or their key? Yeah, so um, um, long, slow, deep breathing would certainly help. Um, you could be either sitting or lying down, and it's really to fill up from the bottom of the abdomen, coming up th through the stomach, right up as far as possible into the lungs, holding it, maybe counting to two or three, and then slowly letting it out again. Um, and otherwise, it's being around nature, being out in nature. It's being uh, not necessarily directly exposed to the sun, but certainly around sunny areas and having reflected sunlight. Um, and uh, um, and then a really nice practice is if you have a friend who's into it, you know, doing a little bit of healing and massage with each other and swapping over. But those kinds of things on a regular basis really help charge us back up again. Oh, and, and the last thing would be uh, any kind of con contact with water, so it could be just having a shower or bath, but, but it could be swimming in the sea or um, a lake or river. Okay, that's a good tip. Uh, and yeah. for our listeners, yeah. we're coming to the end. How can they get a hold of you or if they want your work? Because you have a beautiful book, The Fun Choi Bible. How can they get a hold of that? Um, you can order that from any bookshop. It's, it's sold uh, throughout, um, uh, I'm sure, in Nova Scotia too. And it's just available on Amazon. Uh, and any other online retailers. Um, and then my website is, is um, chi energy, C H I E N E R G Y dot co dot UK. Um, it's a very informative site. I use it a lot for my courses. So 
it's a bit like um, reading a book that's being updated regularly. Oh, that's good. And if the listeners want to get a hold of you for your website and uh, information, uh, do you have because you have your own website too? Yeah, so that website is my website, the Chi Energy one. Oh, I'm sorry, I was, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong note there. Um, okay, and. Uh, um, and then if they want to email me, it's um, it's Simon, S I M O N at and then chi energy dot co dot uk. Perfect. Um, is there anything else that you want to say to the listeners before we go? Well, I think the main thing is um, with all these things, whatever age we are, we've got so many years to live, and the idea is to try and make the most of the rest of our lives, and. Um, so that as we come to the end of our life, we can actually leave our bodies feeling very happy and content and satisfied. Uh, So the big question all the time is, what do I have to do between now and then to feel really content at the end of my life? And to use that as our kind of highest focus on life. So, of course, we'll get distracted with other things and and there'll be challenges that come and go, but, but to try and keep coming back to the main point of being here and using things like Feng Shui to help us along that path. Yeah, I think that's really good. That's really wise. Thank you so much, Simon, for coming on. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, everyone, before we get into the readings for September 15th to September 22nd, 2014, uh, I just want to mention a couple other shows on eacheatradio.com. The first radio show is Anne's Rock Show on Mondays at 5 p.m. Atlantic, uh, and Stephen Lambert's Unsigned Madness on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Atlantic. After Stephen's show comes Chuck Gossie's Boombox America on 6.30 p.m. Atlantic time. These are all found on the live section of eacheatradio.com, so when you go to www.eacheatradio.com, there's a live tab, and you just click on that, and that's where you can hear. And there's a chat room if you guys want to check that out. For more information on these shows, uh, please go to Facebook and Twitter under Each EH Radio. Uh, for information on Tracy and I, Tracy is on Facebook under Reiki with a Twist. Same with Twitter, uh, Reiki with a Twist. Uh, I of the East Coast is on Twitter and Facebook, and Kalina Psychic Readings is on t- Facebook and Twitter. Okay, so here we go for the readings. The first one is Aries. Aries, this is a week about taking a leap of faith and putting what you need first. They're making me feel that a risk is going to pay off in your favor. Um, There's a few positive changes coming in at home. Some of it may feel a little bit, not I don't want to say stressful, but just it's just part of the change. And they're saying it's going to be better for you in the long term. They're also making me feel you may have to put some boundaries with a friend and that's okay. Taurus, this is a week to focus on music. The Guardians are speaking to you with music more than normal, so if you're hearing a song constantly on the radio or you're getting a song stuck in your head, pay extra attention to this. Gemini, Gemini, this is a week for you where a wish will be granted, and they're also making me feel keep your intention very clear, speak from the heart, and there's someone who may be a little bit frustrating, but they're saying look at them through a healer's eyes and see what needs to be healed. Cancer, this is a week to plan. It's not a time to take action. It's a time to be still and to plan. They're also focusing on writing or writing out your frustrations or venting your frustrations a bit more to help clear that. Leos, they're making me feel you need a little bit more time to yourself. Even if it's like just a 15-minute walk around the block, that would be good for you. They're just making me feel um, things may be getting a little bit overwhelming right now, but that's okay. You're just going to clear it. Very go. Virgo, this is a time to focus on family and ancestor, especially a daughter or daughter figure. There's something where it's important to be very practical this week and also to to ground your energy. Libra, this is a week to be still, not a time to make any decisions. It's about balancing. And also to, uh, they're also repeating for you as well, writing may be important. Scorpio, Scorpio, they're focusing on clearing away old energy that should not be there. They're making me feel that um, you may notice the energy is a little bit more louder than normal, so this is a good time to maybe get a massage, a Reiki treatment, or acupuncture. That would be good. Sagittarius. Sag, they're making me feel that you guys are having, um, they're translating as a victory or good news coming your way, but this is a victory that is not given. This is a victory that you worked very hard. They're also making me feel you're going to be recognized for something that you're very pleased. Capricorn, they're focusing on... um, they're, they're, they're focusing a little bit more on thinking more than normal because they're just making me feel you need to be still and think. It's not a time to make decisions, but a time to reflect. They're also showing a gentleman here who might 
have some wise words for you. And they're saying, just be open to listening, not necessarily to do what he's saying, but just listen to where he's coming from. Aquarius, this is a week to balance. Um, anything to anything with contracts or 